1969. This week, the newspapers were covering the space race, but they lacked coverage on a large story, a war between El Salvador and Honduras. When they did cover the story, it was seen as just a little scuffle between two countries over a soccer match. The soccer war may have lasted 100 hours, which is why it's also known as the 100 hour war, but it still claimed 4,000 lives. There are debates about the history of the soccer war, one of which being, was the soccer war caused by the soccer qualifier or the underlying immigration issues in Honduras? Below the surface of the soccer war is a web of conflict and corruption. It was an intricate mix of nationalism, immigration issues, and the 1970 World Cup qualifiers. The three 1969 Mexico World Cup qualifiers are said by some to be the reason that this war happened. Before the games even started, the El Salvador team was up all night by rioting fans outside their hotel. There were even people shooting the trucks that carried the soccer players while they were going to their first match. The first qualifier match was in Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, on June 8, 1969. The game was 0-0 until overtime when Honduras scored to win the game, resulting in rioting by fans in the stand. The media exaggerated the importance of this game and had many news coverages on a woman who sadly killed herself because of the game. They also covered her funeral to create outrage towards the Hondurans. The second game was in San Salvador, El Salvador's capital, on June 27, 1969. Before the game, there were riotous marches hoping to affect the Honduran team's performance. Two men ended up dead at the end of the day. During the game, the Honduran flag wasn't even raised. They raised a rag during the Honduran national anthem. The Honduran team feared for their lives and the El Salvador team won easily 3-0. After the game, the Honduran star player Enrique Condora said, We're awfully lucky that we lost. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive today. Since the first two matches caused a lot of violence, the last match was decided to be held in Mexico City, Mexico. Before the match, El Salvador's coach, Argentine Gregorio Bondillo, was called into the Salvadoran president's home. The president told him that he had to defend the national colors because this match was for their national dignity. The game started out with El Salvador scoring two goals. The Honduran team scored two goals after that, bringing the game to overtime. El Salvador then scored 11 minutes into overtime to win the game. After the game, diplomatic relations were broken off by each country. This was the first step to war. If you would look closely at the dynamic of these two countries before the conflict, you could tell that there was tension between them. El Salvador was a packed country and the poor farmers there saw that Honduras needed workers for the United Fruit Company. This caused a massive migration to Honduras and the local farmers felt like the immigrants stole their land and jobs. By the first qualifier match, there were already 300,000 Salvadoran immigrants working in Honduras. The hate that had been building for a long while was unleashed upon the immigrants and many fled back to El Salvador. The Hondurans burned down the houses of many Salvadoran immigrants and made life horrible for those who stayed. All of these mobs were sanctioned by the Honduran government. Thousands of Salvadorans that had lived in Honduras for as many as 20 years were being kicked out of their homes. It was a horrible experience for those who were forced to walk 50 to 100 miles to escape Honduras. No matter which causes sparked the war, what happened during the war isn't arguable. 
On July 14, 1969, three fighter aircraft were launched into Honduran airspace to start the conflict. El Salvador had the stronger army with seven infantry battalions, a commando company, a special forces company, and a motorized squadron that were supported by two artillery and two battalions of National Guard. The National Guard was backed up by the civilian militia, which numbered up to 6,000 personnel. El Salvador's war plan was a four-front war. They were going to attack Honduras from four different points, called the Chalatenango Theater, the Northeast Theater, the North Theater, and the East Theater. The Chalatenango Theater and the Northeast Theater were low-key and primarily intended to support the advances of the main attack and stop Honduran incursions into El Salvador. The North and Eastern Theater were primarily used for the attack, with the East being the most important. The attack was to begin with a major airstrike on key targets in Honduras, intended to knock out the Honduran Air Force while they were still on the ground. They did this with nine fighter bombs. Some civilian pilots were asked to help by using their planes with mortar bombs attached to the sides. But since the Salvadoran Air Force wasn't as coordinated as their land force, the surprise attack didn't result in much. The Honduran army then started to fight back until the war reached a stalemate. The ending of the conflict was a ceasefire negotiated by the Organization of American States, or the OAS. The Salvadorans negotiated for the safety of the immigrants living in Honduras, and it was settled on July 18th. The short-term impact was a destabilization of El Salvador that led to a bloody civil war in 1979 that caused 80,000 deaths. The returning Salvadorans were also met with poverty and a scarcity of resources. Overall, this conflict is very important because it shows that many problems are much deeper than they appear at face value. It demonstrates how you have to fully analyze a topic to understand its root causes. Was the war caused by the soccer games or immigration problems? In the end, it is up to you to decide. Thank you very much for watching.